Hello biologists, I'm going to help you get started on lab 4.05, the dog breeding simulation. We're looking at selective breeding and how that affects populations. Dogs look very different from each other and their common ancestor, the wolf here. If you have a puppy at home or a dog, it probably isn't as snarly and unfriendly as a wolf would, might be. Wolves, of course, don't eat humans and generally won't bother humans um, unless you bother them. But dogs, our dogs, are very different than the animals they evolved from. You can find out more by reading this paragraph. And in order to answer this question one, you need to read this paragraph. You can do that on your own. Um, selective breeding has resulted in dogs with very different genetic traits. There's a great game we can play, and I'll start out um, showing you what to do. Uh, from this website here. When we get there, we want to click Launch Interactive and we can start playing. The first breed, they're listed in order, will be a Chihuahua, even though it won't say Chihuahua. It'll give some traits. For example, it's small and tolerant of hot weather, and the purpose it was bred for is just to be a companion. The second dog is the Newfoundland, and we saw or we will see that they have webbed feet, an oily coat, and a, they're a good swimmer. They can help fishermen retrieve anything in the water, even people if they go overboard. So let's go play this game here. So here we are on the Nova website, and you can click Launch Interactive to get uh, this fabulous game called Dogs Around the World. And so this is the Chihuahua. They're listed in order, remember? And we already found that um, this dog uh, is long-haired. Uh, one is short-haired, one is long-haired, but they're not tolerant of cold weather. And um, they probably considered the tiny dog a religious icon, so it was probably just bred for companionship. And we know that they are from Mexico. So, if we click on Mexico, we'll find we're correct. Now we know this is a Newfoundland because it's the next one listed on the chart. The chart always is already listed that it has webbed feet, a rudder-like tail, an oily coat, it's good in cold water for long periods, and it was bred to aid fishermen uh, retrieve anything or anyone in the water. And Newfoundland is right here, so if we click right here, we'll get the next dog. This dog is the next one on the list. I believe it's a Saluki. It's long and lean build. Uh, it can keep pace with uh, masters on horseback. So it's long and lean and pretty fast. It can tolerate uh, journeys in the desert, so it can tolerate hot weather. It's a gazelle hunter. Um, so that's what the purpose it was bred for, to hunt gazelles. I believe this one is from... Africa. Let's see. The Saluki is from the Middle East here, right here, uh, in Yemen. So you can go to the next dog, and I'll let you write down the traits for this dog. It's swiftness, it's, so it's a fast dog. It has good jaw strength, um, and it's used for hunting large predators. So the traits are fast, good jaw strength, and the purpose is hunting large predators, and I'll let you guess the country. It's in South America. So now you know how to fill out the rest of the table for question two, and you can think about question three. Why were dog breeders around the world looking for so many different traits? Well, that kind of goes back to here, the purpose. Um, dogs for different purposes need different traits. Also, they live in many different countries of the world and a dog for the desert might be very different than a good dog for fishermen in a very cold climate such as Newfoundland. So think about that when you answer question three. 
For part two, where we are the dog breeder, we're going to head to this website and we're going to play a dog, a game. You can see the setup of the game here. There's six levels. And we're going to have a goal puppy, a puppy that we're trying to create by breeding two parent dogs. So we're going to write down the goal puppy here and fill in the the table as we go through here with the allele, like the letters, big letter, small letter, and then what that pheno what that allele represents in terms of a phenotype. We wanted to keep track of how many trials it took to our goal, how many times we had to breed the parents to get the goal puppy, and then we want to record the parents' traits. So re record the male dog and the female dog of when we successfully bred to get our goal puppy. And then we want to fill out the Punnett square as well. It'll seem simpler once we get going. So I'm going to go to this website up here and we'll do the first one together. Okay, so here is the first part of the dog breeding website. If you want more information on how to play, I would suggest collect this clicking on the question mark and getting started that way. We will do level one together. We want to breed a puppy that has black fur. So the kennels on the right and left side contain the male and female dogs that we can use to breed our goal puppy. Once we've selected the parents, the spinner will show the odds of breeding a puppy with black hair. Click the breed button to create a puppy if you don't get a black puppy the first time. You can click breed again or choose different parents by clicking on new kennel cards. Every time you click breed, the parents basically make a new puppy. And if you want new parents, you can do that and breed again. So let's hit OK here. So our goal puppy is one with black fur. So we want to choose male and female dogs that will give us of the best chance of getting a puppy with black fur. Our legend here shows that the gene for black coat is the one with the black dot in the middle. So let's choose a male that has two black dots because that will give us a higher probability of the puppy inheriting uh, a, an allele for black dot, for black fur. The moms have the same chance, so it doesn't really matter which mom we choose. They each have one allele for black fur. So let's breed here and see if we get a puppy that has black fur. Oh, we did, we did in one spin. We had a pretty good pup. We had basically a 50-50 chance because um, if this was a Punnett square, it would be big B, big B, and big B, big, big B, and this would be big B, little B, big B, little B. And so we have a 50% chance of getting this, and we have a 50% chance of getting this genotype, big B, little b, but that's also going to give us a black puppy. So we pretty much had a 100% chance, and we were going to do it in one spin. We've had some experience with the game. Let's fill in the worksheet here. Our goal puppy was black fur. We know the allele was big B. The recessive allele for brown fur was little b. So the phenotype was brown for little b and black for big b. So we, when we did get to our goal puppy, which was right away, the male dog's genotype was big b, big b. And of course, the male dog is going to have black fur. And the female dog was Big B, Little B, and she also had black fur because um, black fur is a dominant trait. So the mother's genes, the father's genes were Big B, Big B, and the mother's genes were Big B, and this and little b over here.
To simplify your understanding of how to do a pennant square, I actually drew in the mother's alleles here and the father's alleles here. And so you can see for the father, you just put a big B across and a big B across. And for the mother, you put a big B down in this column and a small B down in this column. But you can see from the genotype here, looking at the alleles, that's the genotype, that you can see that the phenotype is going to be black, 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 because black is a dominant gene. So if you have a heterozygous individual that's two different alleles, it's still going to show the dominant allele, which is black. So let's go to level two and see what the goal puppy for level two is. So at the end of level one, we can just hit continue. Let's go to level two. Right now, we need to breed a puppy with long hair. That's our goal puppy. So write that down for level two is a puppy with long hair. We can interpret the genotypes or what alleles the male dogs and female dogs have by looking at the legend here. This is the gene for short hair, and this is the gene for long hair. And if we look carefully at the phenotypes here, we can see that even though this uh, male dog only has one allele for long hair um, and one allele for short hair, it looks like it's got the short hair phenotype. So it looks like long hair might be the recessive gene because here are two copies of the long hair gene and here's a puppy with long hair or a dog, a father with long hair. Let's look at the mother. We have a long hair allele and a short hair allele, and she looks like she's got short. And we're here we have short, short, and she's got short. If we want to have the best chance for our new puppy to have long hair, we want to choose the parents that have the most long hair alleles. Now, in reality, we're probably, uh, if it's a recessive trait, we can know that a dog with long hair is going to have two of these alleles if we know it's a recessive trait, but if we don't, we're kind of guessing what the genotype of the parents is. I'm gonna choose this parent because she has a long hair allele. This parent wouldn't be a good choice because she doesn't have any of these long hair alleles and our goal puppy is long hair. And since it looks like it's a recessive trait, we need two copies, one from the mom one from the dad. If we don't have at least one copy in the mom, we're never going to get a puppy with long hair. So let's check this out. Not quite. You can see that here in our Punnett square, we have a 50% chance of getting long hair and a 50% chance of getting short hair. So the roll of the dice we had a 50% chance of getting the puppy we wanted and we didn't get it this time. So let's uh, breed another puppy. Nope, not quite. Let's breed another puppy. And there we go. So it took us three tries to get the puppy we wanted. Let's note that the parents were, dad was long, long, so let's call that Big L and mom was long short or big L little L. So here we go for level two. We wanted a puppy with long hair and now we want to fill in the table below. We know that that the dominant allele is actually short and the recessive allele is long. Um, we could use L, but it's traditional to use the letter that stands for the dominant allele, which in this case is short. So we'll use a capital S instead of an L. Capital S for the dominant trait, a little s for the recessive trait. Remember, it took us three tries to reach our goal. 
Um, we're going to rep record the parents and choose their traits. Um, we can do that over here by inserting a text box. So if you remember from the game, uh, the father's alleles were S and little s, because it was a long-haired dog. And the mother's genes were big S and little s. So let's do the father's genes first. Oops. Little s, little s. We'll put that in every square. And then we'll do the mother's genes. We'll bring down the big S, which we traditionally put in front. And then we'll bring down the little s, which of course represents the long hair trait. And we can see that just like the spinner, we have um, a 50% chance of getting a heterozygous individual and a 50% chance of getting a homozygous recessive individual. But all these phenotypes, uh, well, these phenotypes will be long haired and these phenotypes will be short-haired. So we have a 50% chance of the short-haired phenotype and a 50% chance of the long-haired phenotype. So for level three, things are a little bit different here. We are going to bring a puppy with medium floppy ears. This trait is different than hair length and coat color. The two floppy ear genes give the puppy floppy ears. Two straight ear genes give the puppy straight ears. But a floppy ear and a straight ear give the puppy medium floppy ears. So this is um, a incomplete dominance trait. So neither gene takes over the other one. If you have two copies of either one, it, it will be expressed. <coughs> we want a medium puppy, so we want one of each of these alleles. A one for straight and one for floppy. So we can get a male dog that we know is going to give us a gene for straight ears and we would love to get a mom that had two alleles for floppy ears but we don't have that so we'll take the mom who has at least one allele. And we can see here in our uh, spinner that we have about a 50% chance of getting a medium puppy. So we might need to breed a couple times. Let's see. Not on the first one. Okay, we'll try again. We'll have a new puppy. Make more offspring. Oh, we need to keep going. Ah, on the third try, we've got a medium puppy. And notice our medium puppy again has a gene for straight ears and a gene for floppy ears. And our parents, of course, dad was straight straight and mom was floppy and straight. So for level three, let's go back up to level three here. Our goal puppy was medium ears. Um, our trait one was the allele was S and the phenotype was straight ears. And here the here where we have a co-dominant or actually sorry an incomplete dominant trait we're going to use a capital letter for each of the traits. So this is floppy ears. So it took us three tries to reach our goal. Um, for the parents, the male dog was SS. That was the genotype and had straight ears. The female dog was SF and she had medium ears. For the Punnett square, I'll insert some text boxes and then we can um, put in the possible offspring. 
So here we see the mother's genes are capital S, capital F for straight and floppy. And for codominant or incomplete dominant genes, you write both traits as different letters and you write them both as capitals. For the father's genes is S and S. So capital S, everybody gets a capital S from the father, all the possible offspring. And then in this column from the mother, we bring down the capital S. And in this column from the father, we bring down the, or from the mother, we bring down the F. So now let's do level four. So level four, things get a little bit more difficult. You need to breed a puppy with both a brown coat and long hair. So once you've selected male and female dogs from kennels, look closely at the spinner to see the chances of producing this kind of puppy. Sometimes it might take more than one round of breeding to get the right traits, and we've already discovered that. You can use any dogs in the kennels for parents. Good luck. And so we can also use offspring as parents. Not a good idea but um, to interbreed dogs like that, but it does happen. So we want brown. So we're looking for um, dogs with a brown allele, and, and both dads have a brown allele. And then we're looking for long fur, and so we're looking for dads with a long allele. And so here's the long allele. Let's look on mom's side. Here's two browns and one long, so let's, let's do that. So what's our chances of getting a brown puppy? It's 50% and only one chance out of four of getting long fur. Would we be better off with uh, mom number two? I think not, because she, uh, the puppy would automatically get a black uh, fur allele, and if you have a black fur allele from both parents, um, from either parent, you're gonna have black fur, so there would be no chance, here we can see what's gonna happen here, if we do this. We have a better chance of long, but we have no chance of brown, so we're better off with the other mom.